Welcome to our horror movie poster contest and tutorial, part three. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on Flurn.com, where we make learning fun. And I'm so excited about our third installment for our horror movie poster and contest. This is gonna be so much fun. So in today's episode, we've got a tutorial, so we're gonna be putting a really cool movie poster together. And then the whole deal with this to celebrate Halloween October is we want you guys to create your own horror movie posters, and you can post them on Flurn.com. So this is a super D. DIY contest. It means don't spend a lot of money, do it on the cheap, get more creative, spend less money, and make something fun, and then put it on Flurn.com. So you can follow the link in the description right down below. We've already got hundreds of entries. There's so many cool things out there. I can't wait to see your photos. So we're gonna get into our tutorial, but be sure you enter our contest, submit your own awesome DIY horror movie poster. Also, I should mention that it ends in a week. So you have until Halloween to get your entries in. So for today's tutorial, we took a reference from The Eye with Jessica Alba, it's a really cool movie poster, and we were like, you know what? This is a really great learning opportunity. Anytime you see an image that you like, it can be a really great learning opportunity to try to recreate that image. And in this case, that's kind of what we did for this movie poster. So if you don't have any ideas of what movie posters you can create, go and find something you like and do your best to recreate it. You can learn a ton along the way. As this is a DIY contest, we wanted to keep things super simple. So our lighting in this case is literally just a light bulb on a light stand, which is a really, just literally a plain light bulb that we screwed into a housing, plugged it in. And then on the front side of the light bulb facing the camera, uh, we just put some black foil. It's called cinefoil, but you can put whatever you want. You put tin foil up there, you can put a black foam core, you know, you just put up a black t-shirt in front of it, whatever. Basically the idea is to keep the light from entering into the camera that would have produced some glare. So we really just wanted the light on our subject. And our subject for today's shoot was the wonderful Angela Estrada, who's a video editor here at Flurn. She's actually gonna be putting this video together, which is super cool. She did a great job embodying this super spooky haunted face. So basically she was just right here in our studio. She was just standing behind a piece of glass and we put a light in front. So camera's here, then we have our glass, she's behind there, and then we have our light out in front. And then we just used a spray bottle, just like an old spray bottle filled with water to spritz on the glass. So the idea is we wanted to make it look like someone's looking out a window at night when it's raining, similar to the original movie poster we kind of took some hints from. So we just recreated the whole thing in here. So again, just a spritz bottle, someone behind glass and a light bulb, and you've got our image. Now in this case, our light source literally is just a light bulb. So I wanted to make sure we got enough light into the camera. So I'm shooting at a fairly wide aperture. We're shooting at f2.0 here and an ISO of 800. So that's gonna let plenty of light in and make sure we can still have a fast enough shutter speed so we don't have motion blur. Now in this case, we did shoot tethered, which means you connect your camera to your computer via USB cable and we're just shooting into Lightroom. So it's really easy to do. If you wanna shoot tethered, just go to file down to tethered capture and start tethered capture. Whenever possible, I really like shooting tethered to the computer because you can just see your images instantly full screen so it's a lot better than looking at the back of an LCD. Obviously that's not going to be an opportunity for you every time you pick up your camera but whenever possible just pull out that USB cable it's really nice to shoot tethered. Okay guys that's the nuts and bolts of what went into the photo now it's time to jump on into Photoshop where we're going to be putting everything together and making the magic happen. Okay guys, it's time to put this horror movie poster together in Photoshop. So the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna load in my raw file and you can download all these files on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So I've got my raw file. This is a CR2 coming straight from the camera. Let's just click and drag this right into Photoshop. And Photoshop has a raw editor built into it. You can see it's Adobe Camera Raw, which is very, very cool. Now I'm just gonna do a couple of things to kind of clean this image up and get it ready for Photoshop. So I'm gonna click here on my lens corrections and let's go ahead and make sure we remove some chromatic aberration, enable our profile correction. And then in this case, I'm gonna grab my little zoom icon here and just zoom in a little bit. Now we do have a little bit of fringing. You can see there's just a little bit of purple here right around some of these water drops. And you can actually remove that here in Adobe, Adobe Camera Raw as well. So let's click on manual, still within our lens corrections. And where it says purple amount, I'm just gonna click and drag this to the right a little bit. And you're gonna see, check that out. So back there is original, you get some purple fringing. And there we go, we can go ahead and take that out. All right, so let's go ahead and back, zoom back out 25%. 
All right, we're looking pretty good. Now, here in our basic adjustments, I'm gonna go ahead and take our shadow levels. We're just gonna brighten those up just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna bring up our clarity, and you know what? Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit more. We'll go to 6% zoom, so I can see my image as a whole. I'm gonna just take my temperature, and we're gonna click and drag that to the left a little bit, which is just gonna cool our image down. And you know what? I'm gonna just brighten up our image just a little bit as well. Let's go ahead and zoom right back in. Okay, there we go. Let's bring our shadow, our shadow level up just a little bit, maybe add some contrast and a little bit of vibrance. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do some coloring to the image as a whole. It's gonna get quite a bit of work done in Photoshop, but I wanna go ahead and make sure that everything looks good um, when we have our start. So here are the settings that it's gonna open up my image. We can see it's gonna be Pro Photo RGB, 16 bit, 22 megapixels, 300, pixels per inch. All that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit open image. And it's gonna basically convert our raw file into a 16-bit image here in Photoshop. So that's literally all we need to do to bring raw files in directly into Photoshop. So now what we're gonna do is just do some coloring on the image itself. Before we mess around with like making it a movie poster, we're gonna like get this image looking how we want. So we're gonna darken the edges a little bit, bring a little bit more interest to our subject. We're gonna just add some brightness and contrast and things like that. And we're gonna be making her eyes nice and white. It's gonna be totally freaky, really fun. So let's go ahead and full screen this image out. Now, there's just a couple of distractions here that I'm looking at here. This part on the left here is just a little bit too bright. I mostly, you know, I wanna be focusing here directly on my subject. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually grab a solid color adjustment layer. There we go. And I'm gonna click and drag here to go all the way to black. There we go. And on this layer mask, I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert that because we also have some like things here uh, towards the bottom of the glass. So well, basically what I do is here on my layer mask, I'm just gonna paint white with a paintbrush on my layer mask. And basically wherever I paint, it's just gonna make this layer visible. So you can see in this case, that's what's going on here. We're just making this solid black layer visible right down here. And that's just gonna kind of cover this stuff up. It's a really nice trick that you can use. You know, in this case we have a black background, but you know, you can use the same thing if you were shooting on a white background, basically same idea there. And I'm using a low flow with my brush here. There we go, a flow of about 20%. So you can see I'm able to fade things away as well. You don't have to have it like on or off at, at 100%. You can kind of fade it in and out. Okay, so that's looking pretty good as a start. We're definitely looking more at our subject. Let's go ahead and crop this in. So I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool and let's hold Alt or Option and I'm gonna click and drag from the top and bottom just a little bit. Let's move our subject, Angela, up just a little bit. And there we go. Right about there, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and zoom in. Um, we wanna go ahead and take care of, I wanna make these water drops just a little bit brighter. And there's a cool way to do that. What we're gonna do is create a new layer and I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool and I'm just gonna paint white on my image. So. We're gonna paint white just where we want our water drops to be a little bit brighter because it's kind of a cool part of the photo and I wanna draw a little bit more attention to that. And we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna be um, painting white over your subject's face because it's just, it would lighten up the highlights of their face, which we don't need. Okay, so now that I've just painted white, you're like, okay, that looks horrible. What we're gonna do is double click here on this layer right here in this gray area or you can go to FX and go to blending options. So either way, you can double click or go to blending options. And we're gonna use, right here in our blending options, you're gonna see something that says blend if, and we're gonna choose the underlying layer. Basically what I can do is make this white invisible where it's dark and only show up where it's light. So that's basically a way to like uh, highlight the water drops that are there. So I'm gonna hold alt or option and click and drag this from the left or the right. And you're gonna see that this layer starts to disappear from the dark areas and it's only gonna show up on the light area. So right about there, that looks pretty good, and then I can change my opacity. So you're gonna see, it's just gonna bring a little bit more attention to those water drops. And you, I did paint right over my subject's face at a couple places, not a big deal. Just go ahead and put a layer mask on there, and then paint black on your layer mask where you don't want this to show up. So this technique is really nice. You can use it to accentuate any highlights in your images that you'd like. Um, you just, if you wanna do shadows, you just do the exact opposite. So here you can see it just kind of like brings out those water drops a little bit more, which is very nice. 
Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and black out our subject size, or white them out in this case. So let's zoom in, and I'm gonna go ahead and start, I'm gonna use my brush tool, so I hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna use a flow of about 10 or 20%. So you can hit Shift 2, in this case, we're gonna use a flow of 20%. And this is pretty cool. Basically, all you have to do is grab your brush tool and then hold Alt or Option to sample a color right around the eye. So we're just gonna sample this color, and I'm just gonna start painting this in, and the eye is gonna completely disappear. Well, the, um, you know, the dark part of the eye, the pupil, I guess. Okay, now in this case, I don't want it to cover up that highlight. Like, the highlight's pretty nice. So let's change our layer blend mode from normal. We're gonna go to lighten, and that's gonna make sure that the highlight is gonna stay visible, but the dark pupil of the eye, that's what's gonna kinda get lightened. So it's just a really quick, like, surprisingly easy way to, you know, remove the pupil of the eye. And I'm not gonna go 100% with this, but just enough to like make it uh, really creepy. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. So hold Alt or Option to sample this color from the eye, and then just paint right over here. It really doesn't take too long. It's one of those cool effects that like looks kinda hard, but honestly, it's like you can do this in two seconds. All right, there we go and looking pretty good. So anytime you do this type of effect, you wanna make sure to zoom out and just make sure that it looks pretty good from like far out as well. Far out, dude. Not that kind of far out. There we go. <laughs> or that kind of far out, either one. All right, so you just wanna make sure that, you know, hey, is this still looking good from far away? Because oftentimes you kinda of get blinded when you're looking at something too close. It's like um, you'll focus on the little details but you won't see the image as a whole. So I like to do this sort of thing, like zoomed out. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just darken this down here a little bit as well. Okay, now as I zoom in, you'll notice that it really doesn't look like it's part of the image. And that's because the image has a little bit of noise, it's got some grain on there, not, you know, there's a little bit of like some detailing. And this is just, I just painted on there with a brush tool, so there's really no detail. So what we want to do is go to uh, filter, we're going to go down to noise, and we're going to go to add noise. And you just want a little bit here, like maybe even, let's type in like 3% here. All right, we're going to uncheck monochromatic, so now let's go ahead and check that out. You can, got a few different options here of what you can, what you can choose. Let's try 1% here. Let's go to 1.5, even just a tiny bit. That looks pretty good there. So in this case, if you guys are following along with this image, totally cool. Uh, I'm at 1.5% Gaussian and monochromatic. And let's just zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see, there we go. If I uncheck this preview, you can see it just doesn't look real. As Soon as we turn that preview on, it looks like it's part of the image. So just a tiny bit of noise can often help uh, just add a little bit more detail and you'll have something that looks a little bit more realistic. All right, so there we have our eye effect. Now, you can always lower the opacity if you little, want a little bit, like here we have like kind of a cataract type effect. Okay, there we go, and we're looking pretty good. Now, the next thing I wanna do is color our image just a little bit. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna grab a adjustment layer and I'm gonna choose a gradient map. And gradient maps are so cool, man. If you haven't played around with gradient, gradient maps, they're so much fun. Basically, just go ahead and click here on your gradient and then whatever's on the left side of your image, that's gonna make up your darks, and on the right side's gonna make up your lights. So to start off with, let's just click on this standard one here. It's a black to white, so this means our, our darks are gonna be black, and our lights are gonna be white. Now I can add a color just by clicking right here, okay? And then if I wanna choose a color, simply click on the color, and then I can add my own color. So you can choose how light or how dark you want this, how saturated, your hue, and everything like that. So in this case, that's kind of what we want here. And you can even click and drag this uh, to the right or the left there, which will just kind of give your image a couple of different uh, effects. Okay, and you can continue to add these if you'd like. Like if I wanted one over here, let's say I want a little bit more of that color, I could do this as well. Okay, gradient maps are so cool. So let's go ahead and hit okay, I kind of like that, why not? Um, we're gonna lower our opacity just a little bit. There we are. And you know what, let's go back here. I'm gonna take this color and we're just gonna make it slightly less saturated. So let's click and drag that to the left there. We'll make it a little bit more on the blue side. All right, hit okay on both of those. 
Okay, now I want to draw a little bit more attention to this area. It's already looking pretty freaky. Let's draw a little bit more attention to here. So I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. There we go. And simply click right here. And I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. And in this case, I'm just going to paint with my brush tool. We're going to paint with a large soft edge brush. And basically, I'm just painting white on my layer mask, which is allowing this to show up. Angela's got these cool dreads. They look really fun. There we go. And I'm just like brightening this up a little bit. So I'm just painting white on my layer mask in just the areas that I want to like kind of like lighten up. Okay. Now you'll notice I did that underneath the gradient map. And the reason is the gradient map is going to color everything that's underneath it. So no matter what you put here, it's going to get colored by the gradient map, which is just a really nice way, especially in cases when you want to integrate maybe some text and things like that. You can pop a gradient map over top of everything and it's going to integrate everything super well. So in this case, you can just kind of like increase your opacity or lower your opacity here and that's going to change how much coloring your image is actually going to get. All right, that is pretty freaky. So we're actually doing pretty well here. We got most of our image where we want it. So now it's going to go ahead in time to bring in some text. Now, as far as text is concerned, uh, basically you can use the type tool and just add your own text. Most of this I've already done ahead of time, just so you don't have to just watch me type stuff. It's super easy. So let's go ahead and bring our text in. We got a couple more special effects to go and then our movie poster it's going to be done. So here in my finder window, I'm just going to bring some of these text layers directly into our photograph. And again, you guys can download all this stuff. So if you just want to follow along with this one, so you like get an idea of what we're doing, that's totally cool. So just click and drag them right into your image. I'm just going to hit enter a couple times and it's going to kind of bring all this stuff in. So let's hit F for full screen and we're just going to resize some of this stuff. So at the very top, we've got our tagline, nowhere to escape, nowhere to run. All right, let's go ahead and bring that down. This is the most fun ever. I've, I'm having such a fun with time with this contest. All right, now this is going to be our title. Let's go ahead and bring that down just a little bit. So that's going to be to here towards the bottom. And as of now, I'm just kind of like clicking on, you know, clicking on things. We're just pretend like we're not, you know, pretend like it's in the wrong place because it actually is. I'll show you guys how to align everything and make everything look good. So our credits we're going to bring in. There we go. I predefined these credits. And if you download this, I'm going to include the download with a really cool PSD that actually kind of makes these for you. You just type in there so you can see, like, I just typed in, like, Aaron Nason team and edited by and all that stuff like that. Um, so it, it basically just does all the work for you. So let's go ahead and bring that down. I'm going to put it in the wrong place kind of on purpose. And this one we're going to kind of put in the wrong place on purpose as well here. So. Our next little lesson comes in aligning everything. So to start off with, let's hit Control or Command A, and that selects your entire image. And this is a super good way to align things in your photos. So now that you've selected your entire image, you can align things based on your entire document. So here we go. We're going to click on our Move tool. And when you're on your Move tool, you're going to see all these really great alignment controls here. OK, so let's go ahead and start off with the top one. Um, Angela Strada is, let's go ahead, you know what, we'll just Put that off to the left there, okay? So it doesn't have to be in the right place at all. So here, we're going to hold Control or Command and hit A. So select all. That's that's first. Then you click on your Move tool. And then you got your alignment tools here. So I'm going to click on Center Align and pop. It perfectly center aligns that. How nice, right? Same thing. We'll just do that with our credits. All right. Our Haunted, we're going to do that too. There we go. And this one, we're going to do that too. So basically, everything is perfectly uh, vertically aligned, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now let's go ahead and there we go. Let's go, go ahead and make this just a little bit smaller and we'll bring this down a little bit. And by the way, if you're moving something, you can hold, see I can move this anywhere, but if I hold shift, it's just gonna let me move it up or down or left or right or at a 45. So that's another good way. Once something is aligned, just hold shift and that's, a, that's gonna be a really nice way to just move it around and make sure it stays where you want it. Okay. Now we're gonna, you can also just use your up and down arrows, by the way. So like here in the credits, I'll just use the up arrows on my keyboard, it does the same thing. So for this haunted, what I wanna do is just add a little bit of a glow to it, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Controller Command J is gonna duplicate this. Now this is, in this case, it's already a smart object because I brought it in, but I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pretend like it's not a smart object. We're gonna just rasterize it, right? So it's just a totally regular layer now. Now, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object again. 
because I'm gonna blur this and blurring is a filter in Photoshop. And anytime you wanna add a filter, I highly suggest creating a smart object first because that gives you ability to have a smart filter. So smart objects, you can use smart filters. And for instance, like a blur, you can change it at any point in time where if you didn't do a smart object and you didn't have a smart filter, you'd be stuck with that blur. So I'll show you what I mean by that, but basically that's why I'm explaining all this. So here we have the copy of our hunt. So we have our haunted font, there we go. And then we have a copy of it, we converted that to a smart object. So I'm gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to blur and I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur, okay? And we're just gonna give this a blur. There we go, you're gonna see it's blurring out from there, which is nice. And let's go ahead and give it too much of a blur, say okay. Now, if you didn't use a smart filter, you'd be stuck with that blur. But because we have, we convert it to a smart object first, so any filter you add is a smart filter, check this out. I just double click on Gaussian blur and I can change this at any time. All right, so it just gives us a lot more flexibility when we're working on our photos. Really, really cool. So let's go ahead and make this just a little bit smaller. There we go. Now, keep in mind, you can still move things around if you need to. And in this case, I'm like, you know what, it looks pretty good, but I can't really read that text. So remember this black layer that we made earlier? I'm just gonna click here and we're just gonna add, we're gonna paint white on the layer mask just a little bit right up here. And that's just gonna kind of darken that down. All right, see, we're just darkening that down a little bit. I can read my text a little bit better now. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, we can go ahead and raise We've got Angela's back here. We can move her up, but if I do that, remember I just painted white on this layer with eyes. So I'm just gonna click on both of those layers and then we can move them both up. There we go, kind of wherever we want. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now earlier, remember we talked about this gradient map and how it colors everything, but we want that to be on the top, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and put that all the way on the top and you're gonna see did you see what happened just then? So let's go ahead and put it up back on the bottom. So when it's under there, you can see like this, the little glow here, okay? It's not being colored by the gradient map. So just click on this gradient map and pull it all the way to the top. And look at that, the glow is now colored the same way the image is colored. So it brings everything together, which is really cool. Okay, we got one last thing we're gonna do. We're gonna throw a texture on this photo, just give it a little bit more grit, then we're gonna be done. So let's go ahead and open up our texture here. Just go back to our finder here, and this will be included in your download if you decide to follow along here. So this is a tan stained paper texture. Let's click and drag that right here into our image. And I'm gonna hit F for full screen. So this one, we're gonna get just a little bit larger here. There we go. Again, make sure it's under your gradient map, okay? And look at that, it automatically colors that. That gradient map is so cool. Now, here, our tan paper texture color, whatever it is, <laughs> Let's go ahead and change our blend mode. We're gonna change this from normal down to screen. And just the lighter areas are gonna show up if it's a screen blend mode. But kind of too much is showing up. I can't even see my image, right? So what we need to do is we just need to make the dark parts a little bit darker and then it's gonna work out well. So let's hit Control or Command L right here on this layer because it's a smart object. We clicked and drag it right in which makes it a smart, job, smart object. So now with my levels, I'm just gonna make my darks a little bit darker. There we go. And as I make my darks darker, you're gonna see basically it's gonna to start to fade away a little bit. All right. And that's the whole idea because we're on a screen blend mode and a screen blend mode will only show the lighter areas. So by making the darks darker, I'm inherently making it less visible. Let's hit okay. Now, we do have some of the color left over from this guy, okay? You can see if I just turn this smart filter off, which is another great thing about smart filters, you can turn them off and we still have some color here. Now this gradient map, let's make that visible. That's only at 62% visibility. So the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna desaturate this texture layer because it's kind of battling with what we got here. You know, we're trying to have a nice cool image and this warm color is kind of battling with that. So it's not a big deal. Just hit control or command U for hue saturation. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take my saturation and dr drag it all the way down. So effectively just desaturating this layer. Okay, so if I turn my smart filter off, you're gonna see that's what basically what it looks like. So let's just put this back to normal again. So that's just the texture. Now we're gonna take this, put it to screen. Okay, turn our smart, smart filters off and we got two smart filters now. So let's turn our hue saturation on, okay? Which just takes the saturation away. It just makes it black and white basically. 
Aren't smart filters so cool how you can just turn this on or off at any time? I love it. And then we're gonna turn our levels right back on as well. So we've got a little bit of texture there. And the great thing about this is, see we got this texture in there, which is nice, but I can just double click here on the levels anytime I want and I can add more or less texture just like that. Okay, so we can just add all the texture we want and we can move it around. Maybe we'll make this texture just a little bit bigger. All right, and there we go. And you can kind of move this around right there in your image as well. And I, I think that looks really, really cool. All right, so let's look at our image, you know, kind of zoomed out here. Anytime I'm looking at my image overall, I'm a big like, hey, zoom out. You know, if you want detail work, that's cool, like what we did with the eyes. But most of the time, I think you want to be zoomed out. So let's take our credits. You know what, I'm just going to make those a little bit less visible because they're pretty bright. So I'm going to hit 60%. Uh, uh, so hit V for your move tool and then six, and that's going to bring it down to 60%. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, there we go. And I'm just gonna move some things around here. Again, you can use your up and down arrows to make things uh, move up and down. Pretty self-explanatory. And sometimes you get these bounding boxes that are just kind of annoying and I want that gone visually. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command H and that's just gonna hide that real quick. So now I can move stuff up and down and I'm, I'm not kind of, I'm not haunted by that bounding box, so funny. Um, <laughs> if it's your first time hitting Control or Command H, it may ask you to hide Photoshop or hide extras. Click on hide extras. All right, there we go. We'll bring that down a little bit. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I'm gonna lower the opacity on that. because so I kind of want this to be first, like this is our focus point, and then obviously this haunted is our next focal point there. All right, guys. And I think we have a killer Look an image, killer, look at that. I'm just full of puns here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our image full screen. Okay guys, that's all there is to creating a super fun horror movie DIY poster. Again, we did this like on the cheap, on the simple. We used a light bulb to light this photo in a spray bottle with some water and just photographed it behind some glass. So you can totally create awesome posters for basically no money. And that's what this contest is all about. So if you haven't submitted your design already, it's time to do so. This is the very last week. Just head over to flurn.com. You can follow the link right in the description right down below. You can enter it right on the page. We've had tons of entries. People are already like submitting to photos. Super cool stuff. So you can browse all the entries right there on the page and you could win up to a year of Flurn Pro for free. Well, if we pick your image, you can win a year of Flurn Pro. That's every tutorial we've ever created, Lightroom presets, Photoshop actions, so many awesome things you can get. All you have to do is just have fun, create a horror movie poster and submit it on Flurn.com. So you got until Halloween to do so. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you later on Flurn.com. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Good goodbye, goodbye everyone, time to leave, although I'm still stuck here on my silly little screen.